Hey scientists, welcome to Over the Top Science. I'm Mr. Crouch. In today's lesson we'll be talking about mixtures and solutions. Let's get started. Okay scientists, uh, we're going to do an investigation at this point. So you're going to need two transparent cups. Uh, make sure they're the same size. Uh, it can be glass or plastic. You're going to need a little bit of salt, some pepper, spoon, and some water. All right, let's get started. Take out your science journals. We're going to title our page and get ready for the investigation. All right, so let's title a new journal page, Mixtures and Solutions. Put that at the top center. Make sure you capitalize all the important words. So Mixtures and Solutions. And then we're going to draw two cups. We're going to leave a little bit of space here, so skip a couple of lines. And we're going to draw two cups. And I'm really good at drawing here. Looks perfect, doesn't it? And leave a little space here. And in the first cup, we're going to put pepper and water. And in the second cup, we're going to put salt and water. So let's label it this way. And we'll go back and I'm going to show you how you got to do it. But let's set it up like this. And beneath that, you're going to write observations. All right, so I have two exactly the same cup. They're both plastic. They're both transparent. Uh, plastic is fine. I would I like transparent, meaning completely see-through. A lot of the plastic cups you buy have a, a tint to them, and for science, the ones that are completely transparent are better. Um, I'm going to pour 325 milliliters of water into both of them. And any time you're doing an investigation or an experiment, it's important to be precise, and it's important to do the same amount in both of your cups. So I pre-measured this out. I used two different measuring cups, and I put 325 milliliters in both. All right, <clears throat> so in the first cup, I'm going to put about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. You don't really need, peppers, you know, you really don't need that much. Uh, it, a little does a lot in these cups. I mean, I'm just using about that much there. If you can see, I'm going to pour it in, and I'm going to stir it. And now I'm going to do the same thing with salt. Again, about a quarter teaspoon would be fine. And I'm going to pour it in. And I'm going to stir. And what I want to do is I want to make observations. Now what you want to do is you want to really look at everything. You want to look what happens to the water. You want to look what happens to the pepper. You want to look what happens to the salt. Um, you want to describe the properties of both the water and the pepper. Uh, one thing you, I'd like to talk about is something called particle size. And what particle size means is how big is the particle of pepper, how big is the particle of salt. So that's one thing you want to mention. And when we go to our notes, uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, you can talk about that right now when you put it in your notes. Uh, another thing I'd like to do is I'd like to talk about the texture of it. Uh, it's fine means it's kind of fine and smooth. A word like coarse means it's a little rough. So those are other things you can talk about. So anything you could say about each one. Now we drew both cups. So under the pepper and water cup, write down everything you observe. What do you see? What's happening? Same with the salt and water. What do you see? What's happening? So take a few moments. Go ahead and write all your observations. Be detailed. Be specific. And we'll talk about it in a moment. Pause the video. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to fill in my diagram here. So uh, the difference between a picture and a diagram is a picture is just a picture and a diagram has labels. So I told you before we have 325 milliliters of water. Now, if you have a different amount of water, a different volume of water, then you should label your volume to what yours is. So I'm, I'm running three, 325 for both of them. And, of course, you want to label it with ml for milliliters, so 325 milliliters for both. And you know, I'm gonna go ahead and label the cup too. I know, we know it's a cup, but we're gonna label it a cup. All 
Now, what you're going to want to do is you, wherever you have pepper, you're going to want to at least you want to put a little black dots with your pencil or your pen or your marker, or whatever. I have, I have it both on the top and the bottom. I have pepper that's floating along the top. I have some in the middle that's sinking, and I have some along the bottom. So I would want to put a bunch of dots and just kind of uh, label it pepper, and you know, point to a few of them. You're obviously not going to point to every single one of them, but you want to point to a few of the peppers that you see. You draw a couple arrows here and there and whatnot. Then you want to be specific about your observations. Uh, let's let's write some observations. The pep, the, I have very fine particles of pepper. So fine. Fine means small and smooth. So fine is something very small and smooth. I notice, I observe that some of my pepper floats and some of my pepper sinks. So I'm writing that. Uh, mine turned a little brownish, so I put my water turned brownish. And that's all I have. If you have more than that, the more you have, the better. Uh, if you don't have some of the things I have, go ahead and write it. If you have more, well, that's great. Now I'm going to do my observations of salt and water. Well, <clears throat> the first, I had fine particles to begin with, but I noticed that the salt disappeared. And it really didn't disappear, it dissolved. So I put salt dissolved, and the water is clear. You might want to write that, but that's what I have for my observations. So I hope yours is something like that, and we're going to keep writing notes. We're going to talk more about which one's a mixture and which one's a solution. Uh, we're going to write some definitions and whatnot. So let's just keep going with the journal writing. Get all this copy, pause the video, and we'll get up to date here. All right, skip a line, and we're going to write some definitions. And eventually, we're going to go back to the pictures, the black pepper and the uh, and water and the salt and water, and decide which one's a mixture and which one's a solution. So skip a line, and here we'll write a definition of mixture. And a mixture is a combination of two or more substances where each substance keeps its own physical properties. So go ahead and write that. And then skip a line, and we'll write the definition of solution. And a solution is a type of mixture where one substance dissolves in the other substance. I bet a lot of you already know which one's which, don't you? All right, <clears throat> we're going to be making a, a list of characteristics of both mixtures and solutions. So you're going to need about a half a page. So if you uh, are running out of room, go on to the next page, and we'll make our list there. All right, so on the, on the left side, we're going to write the characteristics of a mixture. And on the right side, we're going to write the characteristics of a solution. So we're going to make a bulleted list here. All right, so if it's a mixture, it's made up of two or more substances. Well, both of them were that, weren't they? One was black pepper and water and one was salt and water. So they're both made up of uh, two or more substances. Substances. Uh, secondly, can be made up of any combination of solids, liquids, and gases. So what was the black pepper and water? What kind of combination was that? Well, the black pepper was a solid, and the water was a liquid. So it was made a combination of a solid and a liquid. Substances keep their own physical properties. Each substance can be seen individually. And often, but not always, can be separated. You could take uh, each ingredient out or each substance out. So why don't you go ahead and catch up with this list and then we'll go ahead and write the characteristics of a solution. All right, so let's go over the characteristics of a solution. Well, the first one is to be made up of two or more substances. And we see that's the exact same thing as a mixture here. So that's not different. It can be made up of any combination of solids, liquids, and gases. Well, that's the same. Now, something's a little bit different. One substance dissolves in the other substance. So I bet you have the idea now which is which. And I like this one a lot. Substances are evenly mixed. 
you can't see one individual substance anymore. It's just one thing now. And the last one, the complete opposite of often can be separated. This cannot be separated. A few exceptions, but generally cannot be separated. So right now, finish this list and then go back to your pictures and label one the black pepper and water as either a mixture and a solution and then label your salt and water as either a mixture or a solution. All right, so which is which? Which one's a mixture and which one's a solution? The black pepper and water? The here? Here? It goes here. Pepper and water is a mixture. Uh, you can see each, you can see the black pepper and you can see the water. You can separate it. How can I get the black pepper out of the water? Well, I could start pulling it out my fingers if I wanted. I could pick up my spoon and I could pull it out. So I could see each ingredient. I could see each substance. So this one is definitely the mixture. Now the salt and water is a solution. The salt completely dissolved in the water and I can't see the salt. All I see is clear water. The salt is, seems to be gone. If you have any salt in yours, by the way, then you should stir it a little more or add more water. It gets, if you put too much salt, it gets saturated. But mine's completely void of any salt whatsoever. So this here, uh, the salt dissolved in the water, so it's a solution. I can't take the salt out. I don't see it anymore. So this one, the salt cannot be taken out. So go ahead and label this one here as a solution. All right, I have water here and food coloring. I'd like you to make a prediction right now. If when I put the food coloring in the water, is it going to create a mixture or a solution? And justify your response. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it in. Take my spoon and stir it up. All right, <clears throat> is that a mixture or a solution? Well, let's go through some of the things. Is it two or more substances? Yeah, but they both are. Mixtures are two or more substances, and so are solutions. Okay, are the, is it a mixture of solids, liquids, and gases? Well, yeah, it's two, two liquids. The food coloring is a liquid, and the water is a liquid. All right. Does each substance keep its own physical properties? No, actually not. Because I now I have I have red water. I can't get the red out of the water. This cannot be separated. So which one is it? Yeah, it's a solution. This is evenly mixed. I cannot see where the water starts and the food coloring starts. It's just one thing. It's evenly mixed. It's one substance. So this one here is a special kind of mixture called a solution. All right, so let's write uh, a list of examples of mixtures and solutions. So skip a line, and we're going to make a bulleted list. First, we'll review what we've already done. Uh, we said that black pepper and water was a mixture because you could separate it out, and you saw the black pepper, and you saw the water. Uh, we said salt and water was a solution, and we, the salt dissolved in the water, and you could no longer see it. And then we did the food coloring in water, and we ended up with red water. So you can't separate that out, and it's evenly mixed. So that is um, a solution. So I'm going to go over a few more things, and you're going to put them in the correct place. I'll show you a few more uh, mixtures and solutions, and you put them where they belong. All right, the first one I have here is Raisin Bran. It has flakes and it has raisins. So is that a mixture or a solution? Put it in the correct place. This is how you spell raisin bran, by the way. I always have a hard time spelling the word raisin. All right, for my second choice here, I love french fries, and I love ketchup. 
Ketchup and french fries. Mixture or solution. Put it in the correct location. And lastly, I have some hot water here. And I have a tea bag. I'll put it in. Dip my tea bag in. And now my water is turning nice and brown. Now stirring accelerates the dissolving process. Oh, did I give it away? All right, so hot tea or iced tea, would that be a mixture or a solution? All right, so the first thing we looked at was raisin bran. We were able to pull the raisins out of the cereal, so that is a mixture. <coughs> ketchup and french fries. We saw the ketchup laying on top of the french fries, so that is also a mixture. And then we saw inside the hot tea, or iced tea is the same, um, the water turned brown and then it became uniform and evenly mixed. Uh, that is an example of a solution. Uh, please add two more examples of mixtures and two more examples of solutions to your notes. I'd like to use soda as a good example because it's a mixture of solid, liquid, and a gas. Uh, it has sugar in it, that's a solid. Uh, it has corn syrup in it, that's a liquid, many other ingredients, but it also has a gas called carbon dioxide in it. And that's what makes that noise. So this is a mixture of a solid, a liquid, and a gas. Uh, this stuff is called Shasta Twist. It's probably a generic Sprite type soda. But anyway, all that stuff that's making the fizz up here, that's all caused by carbon dioxide, which is a gas. So add that to your list of solutions. One other gas you might want to consider is the air that you breathe. Uh, the air that you breathe is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% carbon dioxide and other. So it's a mixture of many different gases. So we've talked about many different solids, many different liquids, and many different gases. All right, so here's an updated list of the examples of solutions and mixtures. We added soda. Remember, soda is a solution made up of solids, sugar, uh, liquids, water, and gas, carbon dioxide. And we talked about air and how air is a solution of nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. We're going to go on to our journal entry now. Uh, meals are an excellent opportunity to find a variety of mixtures and solutions. List each food and drink you have for dinner and state whether it's a mixture or a solution and justify your response. So go ahead and write that down. That's your homework assignment tonight. And this concludes the lesson on mixtures and solutions. Uh, please email any questions or comments to overthetopscience at gmail.com. And as always, give me a thumbs up. And happy science, everyone.